Welcome to the Realty Hack Podcast, where we talk about damn good tips for leveling up your top performing real estate team or brokerage. Today's topic is about what it means to be a leader in the real estate industry. My name is Ryan Rodenbeck, CEO of Spyglass Realty. And I'm Kelly. I am the director of marketing here at Spyglass Realty. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Ryan. So today's topic is going to be talking about leadership, especially within the real estate world. Um, honestly, this whole podcast kind of stemmed from your most recent award nomination for the Platinum Top 50 Executive of the Year. It's going to be a little self-congratulatory, so get ready. I have some good questions planned, and we're going to talk about that. How does that sound? Sounds good. And, you know, I, I gave a, uh, had to give a little speech about, about this because it, it felt a little bit weird um, in the sense that, uh, like, when I started this company, uh, I saw other people putting in their email titles, you know, CEO or whatever, right? And uh, uh, I've always been uncomfortable with that, right? I, I, I've always put, you know, broker owner. And the reason why is because, you know, a CEO is someone that manages an organization and they've got, you know, other executives underneath them. And I, for the longest time, was kind of the be all end all of, the, of a very small ragtag group of agents. Um, <laughs> well, you know, that started to change in 2015. And my goal was to put my big boy pants on and become a real CEO. And I, I think that we have really achieved that recently, thanks in, in large part to uh, developing an organization with other leaders such as yourself and Sonny and uh, John McCarthy, right? So. For sure. So of course that needs a round of applause and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about how you came to be to this level and honestly, what leadership means to you. So in your own words, what do you think it means to be a leader? Yeah, I think it's a combination of a lot of things, right? Um, I think it is one inspiring others to be their best. Um, and identifying their goals, uh, and not just identifying their, their goals, but how they're going to get there, right? Um, in our organization, we teach agents to put their goals into place and think of how they're going to break down their production and what are the high level objectives that they're going to need to meet in order to achieve their goals, right? Uh, so, so one is, is, is making sure that the people that you lead have a direction to follow. And we do that through business planning. Uh, we do that through training. We do that through teaching um, and also leading by example, right? Uh, if I'm gonna tell someone to read something that I'm gonna have read it myself. If I'm going to, I think the leader needs to know that they, have to really kind of eat their own dog food, if you will, right? Meaning they have to, I never ask anyone to do anything that I would not be willing to do, okay? Now that's, that's not that I would not be willing to do it now because mm -hmm. I feel like I've got more, more responsibilities and like doing sales is not exactly what I do, but I've done it for many years. Uh, the other part of, of, of being a leader is surrounding yourself with good people. And I can't tell you how important that is, especially as you scale a company. Uh, you really need to make sure that uh, you have a good support system to help you lead others. And that's why we've identified our leadership team in terms of operation, sales, and marketing, okay? And we all get together and we decide how we're going to lead uh, our team. And then the other part of being a leader is in my opinion is having a leadership team that can also keep you in check because most leaders are a lot like me in the sense that uh, i feel like i have a lot of good ideas but for every good idea i have there are two or three ideas that are just complete crap right so most of the two-thirds of those ideas that are bad i identify 
as being bad and quickly say, okay, we're not going to do that. But the other one third, I need a support system like you and Sunny to say, Ryan, that's just not going to be efficient. <laughs> Very long answer to that question. No, and that's a good answer. And I will say as someone who's been on the receiving end, even though your great ideas are great, few and far between, some of them are kind of crap. Yeah, I doubt about lovely, it. Of course, <laughs> yes. So I do think, I, I definitely do think that the internal accountability is also a big part of it. So I'm glad to hear that. What would you say some of the growing pains that you've faced up to this point are? Yeah, I want to say one more thing about leadership, right? Yeah, a, a big part of leadership is humility and being able to learn from your mistakes, being able to fail forward, right? You, you're you going to take a lot of hits. You need to be able to get back up and, and really, you know, get back up swinging, okay? Because as an entrepreneur and a leadership role and, and a leader to others, what, what you need to know is, especially in entre being an entrepreneur, you are going to fail more times than you succeed, especially in the beginning of this journey, okay? So being able to take failure uh, and learn from it and not be impacted in a negative way is a huge part of it. Uh, to answer your question, uh, what have been the, the biggest uh, hiccups, growing pains in this business? Without a doubt, it has been that I was a top producing real estate agent. Um, and in order for me to become a broker, I had to grow my company um, and also sell real estate at the same time. Because in the beginning, when you're at 12 agents, even 16 agents, and you're making, you know, smaller splits off of them, that's not enough to support your lifestyle. So, uh, you know, the, I think my, my, my sister told me a long time ago that, you know, the mind can't serve two masters. And what that means is in that role where I was selling, you know, 50 homes a year, plus trying to recruit, plus trying to manage, uh, plus trying to train, that's that's way too much, right? Um, so for us, we made a decision that like we needed to do some things that I would not have to be dependent on selling real estate. So last year we stole the duplex that we owned and pulled out some money and said, okay, this is the, our cushion for me to be able to recruit so that I don't have to be dependent on selling a home for the commission for us to live off of. Uh, so that's been number one, the biggest hiccup uh, in, in getting to where I'm at. Um, number two is, is making sure that my mindset was in the proper place. And uh, we talked about, you know, failing forward and, and, and learning from mistakes and getting back up swinging, but that's, that's easier said than done. Uh, so, you know, you have, these moments where you think you're going to get somewhere and something happens, it sets you back and it can be really hard. As an example, you know, COVID was, was definitely a big part of that. The first, you know, two or three weeks, we had, we'd gotten to 30 agents when March hit. And uh, I thought it was going to be the end of the world uh, in, in terms of, of real estate, you know, that the market was going to crash. And I think a lot of people thought that. So, you know, having to, you know, I spent like two weeks of like grief and worry and anxiety, right? And and then I I, I said, you know what, I'm done with this. Let's get back up swinging and really dived into the company culture. We started having, you know, more online meetings. We had, you know, I think three meetings uh, a week that were not mandatory, voluntary, but everyone just sitting at home. We was we had a very high attendance, and we started doing uh, a weekly happy hour, right? Um, so, you know, really uh, overcoming the big things that, that hit you out of nowhere that are unexpected. And I will say that as you go through the leadership journey, you get better at that. So, yeah. Okay. I like that answer. And I think for the viewers listening, I think they'll find that regardless of where they are on their own leadership path. I'm sure that the the two points that you've put out would resonate to different people on different levels and different stages of 
where they are at. So from a leadership perspective, how do you structure your organization? Yeah, so I've thought a lot about this and we've made every mistake in the book. And the bottom line is that you really do need structure. And I'll kind of give you the evolution of our structure and, and what we've done wrong and how we rectify that. Um, we would have a once a year kind of like strategic uh, dive into what we're looking in. And then that went to, okay, let's do a quarterly meeting where we identify uh, what our objectives are for this year, what are our objectives are for the next three months, what our objectives are for the year, and what are we're looking in a three-year goal, right? Um, and we would look at that every three months. And what we found was that we really, that wasn't enough. Right. Um, and, and I'd say even a few months ago, I kind of had this overwhelming feeling of like, man, I'm not, I, I feel like we're not moving in the right direction as a company. And I don't have, I don't have an MBA. I don't have this structure down. And I got with Sonny and I said, what can we do to make sure that we're all on the same page? And what we came up with was what we've been doing recently was let's have a 30 minute meeting every week, right? In addition to our, our quarterly meeting that we have. And so what we're trying to put in place now and, and what I think is really important for all leaders to do is make sure that everyone, need, everyone knows what it is they need to do in their job, right? And, and, and revisit that every quarter and then when you have your objectives you know look at those objectives every week for us we look at things we we, we, we put those into three different categories sales operations and marketing okay uh and and we take our quarterly objectives our quarterly rocks if you're if you follow the eos system and every week we revisit them because Every year you're going to make a goal, but you're, the way you're going to achieve that goal is to set out your objectives and revisit them on a quarterly basis. But every week we're going to have a quick 30, 45 minutes call to make sure that every project we're working on is moving forward at, at the pace that we need it to. And if there's any support from any other department that we give it to each other. So that's, that's a long winded answer to, to, you know, how our structure is set up. And, and, and again, all goes back to, you know, what does it mean to be a good leader? And, you know, first of all, making sure that you're inspiring others and helping their goals. But second of all, and just as importantly, having the support system of a leadership team. That was a wonderful segue into my last question, which would be, what are some words of advice that you can provide to the leaders listening? to improve their own skills to not only better themselves, but also the lives of others around them. Yeah, um, get help, right? Uh, and, and, and no one does this on their own. If they do, they, they stumble when they do it. Um, you know, coaching from, from leaders is good. Uh, reading uh, books on leadership. Uh, there's a book called Rocket Fuel that I highly recommend. I think it's really good. Uh, and then, you know, if you're, if you're in a real estate space, have counterparts of you in other organizations that, that you, you know, frequently talk to and get advice from. Uh, I have a group of guys that I've been working, I mean, meeting with every two weeks for like five years, right? Uh, I'm in entrepreneur organization, at EO in Austin. Um, you know, I've got Three of my best friends are owners of other real estate companies in, in Austin. You can't do this on your own, okay? You, to be a better leader, you need the support and training from other leaders. So that's what I would say, you know, um, get, get help, you know, get, 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 get paid help and get free help. Add on to the list of books that are really good for leadership. I would also like to add Brene Brown's Dare to Lead. Fantastic read for okay. big leaders, small leaders, anyone in between. 
And thank you so much. Thank you so much for, again, for tuning in. If you have any questions, please email them to marketing at spyglassrealty.com. And we'd love to speak in more detail about what it means to be a leader in real estate.